From the well, an extremely violent jet of oil and mud began to erupt, which covered the entire rig in a very short space of time. Then there was an explosion, and after 10 seconds, another. The rig will eventually sink, and for another 87 days it will continue to release oil into the water, impacting an area of 112,000 kilometers, which is about a third of the size of Italy. Today, I want to talk to you about the Deepwater Horizon disaster, which is one of the worst environmental tragedies in recent history. It was so serious that, in a speech, Obama himself likened it to an environmental September 11th. However, to understand exactly what happened on that rig, we first need to understand how an oil well works. It all starts with the tower we see at the top of the rig, which in jargon is called a derrick, and which allows a drilling system to be lowered to the seabed inside a guide tube called a riser. The drilling system is composed of steel rods and a rotating cone bit that is used specifically to dig through the rock substrate and reach the oil. As drilling progresses at certain intervals, the drilled well section is basically lined with a steel column, which is in turn cemented to the rock itself, and this is to ensure that the walls hold up and do not collapse on themselves. During all the drilling phases, there's a safety system in place known as a blowout preventer, or BP, which is installed on the seabed. The system can be activated either automatically or manually by the technicians on the rig. The BP is essential because oil can exit the well at extremely high pressures. And if the pressure is so high that it becomes uncontrollable, it's referred to as a kick. So, in this case, the oil could travel up the drilling pipe and reach the rig, and it would take just one tiny spark to blow everything up and to have what, in the jargon, is called a blowout. To prevent this from happening is precisely what blowout preventers, or BOPs, are for. As we will see shortly, the disaster on the Deepwater Horizon was not caused by one single issue, but unfortunately, by as many as five different problems that, in a very short time, together caused the entire rig to explode. Now, we're going to analyze them one by one. The Deepwater Horizon drilling platform was located about 80 kilometers off the coast of Louisiana, and its task was to complete the drilling of the Macondo well, which would allow the company BP, in the following years, to extract oil and gas from the ocean floor of the Gulf of Mexico. So, on April 20th at precisely 8.45 p.m., a critical test was being conducted aboard the Deepwater Horizon to test the well's resistance. Remember how, to drill the well and ensure its stability, protective steel pipes were cemented to the walls of the hole? This test showed that the cement utilized was not at all of a suitable quality, and indeed, it failed to hold up as expected. So, during the test, quite suddenly, it began to give way, leading to a kick, meaning that a sudden and unexpected mix of oil, gas, and drilling mud began to rise from the well. Immediately after, we encounter the second problem, which is that the operators misinterpreted the test data and consequently failed to identify the uncontrolled ascent. In other words, they didn't realize what was happening. The result? The BP was not activated in time. At 9.42 p.m., so in less than an hour, the gas and oil traveled up the drilling pipe and reached the surface, gushing from the derrick and soaking the entire rig with a highly flammable substance. At this point, workers manually activated the BOP. And what was the third problem? It turned out that the BP did not function as expected. In fact, the first thing that was activated were the rubber seals, but the kick had been so violent that the drill pipe had shifted from its axis, and therefore the blocking system failed to completely seal it off. Moreover, in the small space that remained between the pipe and the BP, fluids flowed with such high pressure that they eroded both the rubber seal and the pipe itself. At 9.47 p.m., the operators activated the clamps to seal off the pipe. But, as you might have guessed, it's here that we come across the fourth problem. In fact, it was soon realized that the battery systems that should have powered some of these clamps were actually flat, and they therefore failed to activate. Basically, the oil continued to gush out. There was nothing to stop it. Meanwhile, chaos reigned on the platform, and then the power went out. It was at this point that the explosion occurred. After 10 seconds, there was another one. 
No one knows for sure exactly what triggered these explosions, but it was most probably a spark in the engine room that in turn ignited the gases that had risen from the well as a result of the kick. There was actually a system on board to manage gas in the riser, which should have prevented it from reaching the engine room. However, as we have now understood, something in the system didn't work as it should have. In fact, here we have the fifth problem. The gas management system malfunctioned. Moreover, the rig began to move from its correct position, snapping off the drilling pipe just above the seabed. At 9.52 p.m., what we can call the emergency shear ram was automatically activated. This is the internal system in the BP that should have cut off and sealed the drill pipe. The problem, once again, was that the pipe in the blowout preventer had unfortunately buckled due to the intense pressure of the kick, and so the cut wasn't a clean one. And consequently, the shear ram was unable to seal the well completely. The result? The oil continued to gush out. In the meantime, up on the surface, a mayday was issued, and in the following hour, the Coast Guard managed to rescue 115 people, 17 of whom were seriously injured. Unfortunately, at the same time, no less than 11 people lost their lives. As for the rig itself, it continued to burn for two days before sinking into the Gulf of Mexico. So, now that the platform has sunk, theoretically, we shouldn't have any more problems, right? Well, actually no, because the well on the ocean floor wasn't closed at all. Consider that the wellhead was at a depth of over 1,500 meters, so operations to seal it off were extremely complicated. In the end, the engineers from BP managed to install a sort of 40-ton hermetic cap, and by doing so, they finally managed to seal the oil spill. On July 15th, after no less than 87 days. During this time, over half a billion liters of oil spilled out into the water, contaminating over 2,000 kilometers of coastline, in Louisiana in particular. Making the Deepwater Horizon the largest oil spill disaster in the history of the United States. Alright guys, thanks for watching up to this point. Today, I wanted to focus primarily on giving you a technical reconstruction of what happened, leaving aside everything related to the legal sphere, to responsibility, and everything to do with the environmental cleanup, because they're really broad topics that deserve their own separate, in-depth analyses. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Leonardo Spicci for his technical support. I'll see you again soon for another video, right here on Geopop Everyday Science.